Saskatoon, Canada's golden girl, Katrina LeMay-Doan. Saskatoon's Katrina LeMay-Doan has been a force in women's speed skating ever since she took up the sport at age nine. She joined the Saskatoon Lions Speed Skating Club in 1980, winning the city championship and the Canadian Bantam Championship in her first year of competition. In 1988, she joined the Canadian national team and never looked back. At the 1998 Nagano Olympic Winter Games, Katrina won her first Olympic gold medal in the 500 meter in Olympic record time and added a bronze medal in the 1000 meter event. After carrying the Canadian flag into the opening ceremony at the 2002 Olympic Winter Games, Katrina defended her Olympic title with a gold medal performance in the 500 meter event becoming the first Canadian individual and the only female Canadian individual to defend a gold medal at any Olympic Games. Katrina was selected as Canada's outstanding female athlete in 1998, 2001, and 2002, and was also named as a winner of the Lou Marsh Award as Canada's outstanding athlete in 2002. She made the jump to broadcasting, covering five Olympic Games and co-hosted the primetime show Countdown to Beijing. She joined the Olympic broadcast team for the Vancouver 2010 Games, earning her a Gemini for Best Sports Analyst. At the London 2012 Olympic Games, Katrina was co-host of the Olympic Morning Show. Katrina was also inducted into Canada's Sports Hall of Fame and the Canadian Olympic Committee Sports Hall of Fame and appointed an officer of the Order of Canada. Katrina, it is so nice to see you. I, our paths tend to cross once a year at some event or another, but it's been a really long time. So I'm very pleased to welcome you to this show. And I am so happy for you to step into this role. Not as happy as you are though, I bet. <laughs> um, I know that this has got to be the thrill of a lifetime. You said this is a full circle moment for you. So. What makes becoming the chef de mission so special? Well, yeah, th thank you for that. Um, I, you know, it is something that I've wanted for many, many years. Uh, perhaps put one opportunity on hold way, way back to go into media. And it was the right choice. Mm -hmm. But especially having been there in 2018, watching Isabelle Charret, um as chef de mission in Pyeongchang and being with the team, being part of the mission team, it was something that I knew that I wanted. And uh, I'm just so pleased when I was told, uh, I, I burst into tears, which was my indication that I was just, I wanted it really badly. And so I'm, I'm just super excited. Well, say more about what it was that you observed. Obviously you've been part of so many teams and you've had chefs de mission, um, but watching Isabelle in particular, what did that spark in you? Well, it was the right time for me to be part of the mission team. I had four games as an athlete, five as media. And to take on that role, I remember when I told my kids and they said, well, what does it mean? Are you going to get paid more? And I said, no, I get paid nothing. <laughs> uh, and, and this is in 2018. Or are you going to be, you don't have to be away as long. Well, I'll actually have to be away longer. You're going to be on TV. No, I'll never be on TV. They're like, why would you do this? But being there, being ingrained in the village with the athletes, watching Isabel deal with the good and the bad. And that's what a chef does. Actually, the chef deals with more of when things go wrong because when things go well, you step aside because the focus and the highlight is on the athletes. But just watching Isabel and how she dealt with it, I mean, we get along really well and I just really admire her. And I, I knew then that I, I didn't want to lose this feeling of being a part of the team. And uh, it was to me the next step. And so I'm, I'm fortunate to now have that next step. And really for that Olympic um, world and life of mine to come full circle. You served as the lead athlete mentor in 2018. So I guess describe for us what the difference might be between what you did then and what you'll be mm -hmm. doing in 2022. Well, it, it was not glamorous in 18 and none of these roles. I mean, everybody gives so much of their time to the team. And as an athlete, you, you aren't always aware of it. And I don't know if you should be aware of it because as an athlete, you go there with one goal. And so the role of the entire team is to support that goal that you have as an athlete to perform the best of your ability. In 2018, I mean, I would open up 
the athlete lounge at 7 a.m., make coffee, stock shelves, watch with athletes. So, you know, I was watching their practices. I would go to the venues when I could, sometimes watch competitions, hang out in the village, watch them, go for walks, go for runs, you know, talk to them about issues that were happening with themselves, with their team, whatever it might be. Um, dealing with situations that weren't always super pleasant when there was sort of a, you know, a situation that, that an athlete had to be um, either sent home or, or whatever it might be that sort of wasn't acting according to the Canadian team standards and, and values. So it was a real mixture, but it was just, it's a family. And to really be a part of that, to know that, you know, the athletes, regardless of their performance, that I was a tiny little part of it, it, it was you know, it was meaningful to me and hopefully it helped them. And so as a chef, you know, it's, it's different. I won't be as ingrained in the day-to-day -day of the athletes, but I want them to understand going into the games. I want to know the athletes. I want them to know that I'm there for them in whatever way. And I'm, and I'm going to have their back. I mean, first and foremost safety, but then I'm there so that they can have the best performance that they're capable of. These are precarious times, as we know. I'm sure Marnie McBean never would have imagined things unfolding <laughs> for her the way that they did. Have you have you talked to any chefs or previous chefs about you know what this world might look like? Uh, Marnie and I have been talking, and uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's she's gone through it, um, really dealing with the unexpected, and that's where the athletes they're coping really well because for especially if you look at the tokyo athletes i mean for canada to take such an incredible stand it was a right stand to say no safety is first we will not go and then for it to be delayed and for marnie to then go okay now let's readjust and to for her to help the team readjust for the winter athletes uh for the spring when things were in lockdown perhaps easier for them at that time because they were starting, most of them were starting their dry land training. So they could do a lot of their training still. It's tough because what's going to happen throughout the winter is, is a big question mark. So will there be competitions locally, uh, nationally, internationally? Nobody's quite sure, but athletes can adjust. And for them, they still have, they need a goal and their goal is February, 2022. And that's their goal. And, and that's what they need to focus on. And then backtrack and go, what steps do we have to do? It doesn't change the fact that I need to perfect everything about my performance and what can I do about that? And so even though there might not be the competition, there's still so much work to do and they're right on track. You wrote a beautiful essay or heartfelt piece at olympic.ca. So I really encourage people to take a look because it's definitely comes from the core of you. Um, but a lot of points that, that you touched on that I, I want to ask you about, you talked about the most momentous <laughs> Olympic occasion for you. One would have thought that it was perhaps a, a gold medal, the first one, or maybe the second one, which was a pretty big deal. Um, but it wasn't. It was when you and Simon Whitfield first were given uh, the Olympic torches to kick off the run to, to Vancouver. Can you tell me a little more about that experience? Yeah, you know, you're right that most people assume that it will be the Olympic gold medal moments. And and those are impactful to a point, but again, you're you're in a you're in a whirlwind. And for speed skating, our season's not done at the Olympics, and you're always thinking what's next, what's next. And so you don't really stop and 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 take it in. It, it, I I actually think it took years for me to for those moments to really sort of impact me and 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 make a huge mark on me. But as I mentioned earlier, athletes are very goal oriented and we're very planned and, you know, we know what's coming up. And so even for competitions, you might not know the result, but you know what the plan is. The thing about that October 30th morning in Victoria, BC was the fact that Simon and I didn't know what to expect. And so, wow, we're going to get to start this torch relay. This is going to be pretty incredible. But it was the power of those moments. It was the power of having lit the torch carrying it together and we started jogging down this path and I mean it just you know it sort of it, it makes me emotional because I just saw the faces of people mm. and it's the power of the games the power that can unite people that really made an impact on me and so it's beyond medals it's beyond medal performances it's beyond championships it's it's that power of the flame 
And I don't think I'd ever felt it as strong as I did then. Just a sport in general has, it's been your life and continues to be your passion. So with Sport Calgary and um, Canada Games and all the incredible things that you do, why is that so important to you? You know, sport and people are the two things that I'm passionate about. And again, I don't care whether we're talking grassroots sport. With Sport Calgary, we have over 300 clubs that we that we deal with. Sports that I'd never even heard of before, some of them. <laughs> And, um, you know, but, but, but sports that have, that have come, whether it's, um, you know, with our diverse culture, whatever it is, like the, these incredible sports and activities, and whether you're talking Canada Games, the stepping stone to high performance, whether you're talking Special Olympics, another national board that I'm on, it's sport, it, it's pure, and it's regardless of what level, it is just so good for each person. But now as an adult and as a mom, I play old lady ringette. And then just a few years ago, I started with hockey. And, and you go out on the ice and people just kind of look at you like, oh yeah, you're going to be great at this. Well, I beat most people to the puck or the, or the ring. But after that, I mean, I, I want to get rid of the puck because I'm terrible with it. So, you know, people look at me going, oh, you, you aren't really that good. I know I'm not good. So <laughs> the thing is, the sport grounds you, right? And it's just, it's, it's fun and you learn new things about yourself and you become vulnerable and, and things like that, especially that vulnerability side and, and meeting the friends and having that network, nothing else I feel can give it to you. And the fact that I'm about to turn 50 and I'm happy about that. And, you know, the fact that I still want to go out and try new activities and be super active, that's how I want to teach people how to live. I don't care how good you are at something. It's just that sport, and again, sport, not necessarily being organized sports, sport and physical activity and an active life. I mean, it just gives us so much more and it makes us, I, I believe it just makes us happier and healthier people as, as a community and as a country. A hundred percent. Katrina, we leave every guest with this question, and it is, what is your best advice for a young Katrina? Oh, I'm going to say, and this is so difficult to say, I'm going to say, you know, be okay and be proud of who you are. And that is not an easy thing to say, and it's not an easy thing for people to do. And I don't think I did it as a young girl. But the sooner and, and, and the faster that individuals can be okay with who they are, with, with how they're built, with how everything physically about them, but everything emotionally too, and, and, and be vulnerable. And that's part of accepting who you are, that you'll be really good at some stuff and not so good at others. The sooner we can all do that, and the sooner we can not judge ourselves and not judge other people, that's what I would encourage every person to work on, including myself. And me too. Katrina LeMaidon, you are a true inspiration. I am so thrilled for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you.